what's for dinner. Oh, hey internet, Matt, head over to a Woodcraft. And today I wanna to give you a quick tour of my two car garage wood shop. Uh, I've been in it for just over three years and while I've been woodworking on and off most of my life, uh, when I bought this house originally, I had no intention of turning the garage into a wood shop. Long story short, I was just doing a completely different career at the time and found my way back to woodworking and now this is mainly what I do. So why am I waiting till now to do this tour? Well, I finally have it to where I want it and I'm moving. So uh, that's fine, it'll be to a bigger and better space, but before I break this one down, I wanted to capture everything I've done because I'd like to think that for a two car garage, I completely maximize the efficiency and uh, workflow capability, especially considering what I make, which I suppose is relevant. Um, and it's basically everything. Um, I do a lot of cabinetry, but I mean, I also turn, I do a lot of furniture. Uh, I even mess with epoxy and home decor occasionally. So, um, you know, it's different when you're just focusing on one or two specialized areas of, of woodworking. Um, making a two car garage work for that space is, isn't that difficult. But when you're focusing on all of them, um, you have to make the whole space work for all of them. So I know there's hundreds of wood shop tour videos out there. And uh, ironically enough, when I was first considering turning this one into a wood shop, I remember thinking to myself, there is no way I would ever have a wood shop, you know, that nice or, or worthy of doing a YouTube video on it. But I'm really proud of what's become of this space and hopefully it'll help you, you know, with your space or at least you'll find it somewhat entertaining. Uh, either way, stick around after this intro and we'll get right to it. What's that? Oh, I don't have a fancy intro yet. Well, this is awkward. Oh, hey, look at those floors. Let's start there. All right, so as you can see, I've got these in most of the shop. It's um, called the Nitro Coin Flex, I believe. It's basically just part in PVC that's flexible like rubber. But um, they were expensive, but they were super worth it because uh, I'm a disabled veteran, so I've got a bunch of, you know, joint issues, and that automatically gives me the right to, you know, talk to people about taking care of their back and your knees and everything else like that. It's in the Geneva Conventions. Look it up if you don't believe me. But regardless, these have been a huge help with all of that, and they also help preserve the life of your wood projects as well, because my hands are a little jacked up too. I'm a little clumsy at times, and I have definitely had to remake projects from scratch because I've dropped them on my hard concrete floors and ruined a corner, or whatever the case may be. And uh, I've dropped plenty of stuff on these, and thankfully, um, I didn't have to remake them, so they were completely fine. So the main thing is, is uh, everything in my, my shop is on casters. So despite having this little circular pattern that I didn't want, um, everything still rolls around just fine. So definitely recommend getting yourself some good floors. I mean, if anything, it'll just make being out in the wood shop that much more enjoyable. All right, so moving on to the heart of my wood shop is my assembly slash outfeed slash everything you can imagine table. Um, on the top, I just have a laminate that I bought from Home Depot. And let me tell you, laminate is the way to go when it comes to workbench surfaces. I've dropped epoxy and CA glue and just everything you can imagine on this. I scrape it off, it looks brand new. I've had melamine on a few before, but um, it just doesn't compare to how durable this is. Of course, I put some fancy maple trim on there. Then I just have a couple of hoarding drawers in here. This is all my sandpaper and some of my sanders, and then this is just other random stuff. And then I never really finished out these cubbies, but you know, they hold quite a bit. And then I've got a match fit panel under here that just goes right on top. I secure it with a couple of threaded inserts that I glued into the workbench top itself. Um, but this has been really great for the awkward assembly stuff as well as uh, when I'm using dominoes, because um, some of those can get kind of weird. So um, this was actually uh, an old Ikea desk that my neighbor was tossing out. And um, I mean, it's stable, it's, you know, particle board, and um, it was like an inch thick. So, you know, I figure I might as well put that Ikea furniture to good use. And so these casters are awesome. They're just the Powertech brand off Amazon, but, don't have to worry about tripping over them like I tend to do when they're in an up position and the workbench is down and they have no problem moving this big heavy workbench around. And then over here is where my Moxon vise goes. It's made it out of some thick sapelli. Just look right on there. I've got a couple bolts with wing nuts, so secure it that way. 
and then just some maple knobs that I turned, put some threaded inserts on. And yeah, it's been awesome for edge banding, which is mainly what I use it for, but it's plenty strong enough for everything else. Just tuck it away when I'm done. I also have the adjustable leveling feet on the back because it's a garage and of course the slab is at a slope. And then, if we move my table saw out of the way, you'll see that is where my cross cut sled sits. I've got a full video out on that. It's an amazing sled. It's got the match fit system done into it, of course, and a adjustable zero clearance insert. And when I designed the workbench, I had that in mind. So it fits perfectly there. I can put my table saw right up there and I don't have to worry about, you know, anything getting in the way. Over here is my miter station. Uh, these three individual pieces actually can all be disconnected. So it's really easy to move around and store. Um, if you're wondering why my antique mini lathe is not covered up with the door, it's because I actually got the measurements wrong, but that's all right. Little dust never hurt. I also made these cool cabinets for storage, just have random stuff in here, you know, sanding supplies, my, uh, my gauges, digital calipers, all that. And then just random tool storage in here. It's just been awesome to have all this extra storage. And so then for the miter saw itself, uh, obviously the great thing about this Delta Cruiser Gen 2 is that it just backs right up against the wall so i'm able to completely maximize the space there then i just have my little magnetic inserts i've got a few videos out on these and how i did this whole setup but my main desk collector is the two horsepower harbor freight but for this one i have that wall mounted uh, shop fox with the 2.5 micron bag this is my first dust collector that i bought and you know it's not super strong but as you can see the line doesn't have to run very far so it gets the job done. And then to the right of the miter station, I've got my flammable locker with a fancy door stop. Basically all the paint and stains and everything in there, some battery chargers. Uh, thankfully I've slowly started converting over to Milwaukee. So that is nowhere near the rat's nest that it used to be with all those random different chargers. And then this is my stain wall locker cabinet deal. I haven't really thought up a name for it, but as you can see, plenty of, plenty of storage in there. So uh, my super old toolbox, first one I bought, just, you know, random tools in here. Then over here, I have a pretty massive collection slash addiction to X fastened tape, especially the double-sided tape. When it comes to jigs, and you know duplicating templates and everything like that that stuff is invaluable in my shop so in the center back wall i have this workbench that i picked up you know for like 50 bucks offline um mainly got it because i wanted to hide all the ugly hvac work and everything back here but it does come in handy as a random place to you know put all the tools that i'm using at the time during an assembly and i want to free up space on my workbench because uh I don't know what it is. I just tool aprons and everything. I, I love these ones that I have. I just find myself not really wearing them. Instead, I just like to have one or two things around my waist, on my belt clip, and everything else. I just like to either have multiples of placed tr strategically around the shop, even though I still lose them, like tape measures and pencils. But um, yeah, it's just the way I work. I did make this little cubby though that I stash all my Craig Jig tools in. And then the rest is basically just random stuff. And I have like, a huge Australian pine tree stump hidden underneath here in the back. I have no idea what I'm doing with that. So I'll figure that out one day. So of course there's the coveted sticker swap door. Um, made sure I just put this on a little thin piece of uh, like one eighth inch that plywood that doubles as whiteboard or whatever. So I'll be able to take that with me wherever I go. Over here is my safety equipment uh, cabinet whatever um mainly just with your hearing protection and glasses because you don't want to go put those on and then they've got sawdust all over them so it does a really good job of keeping that out wall control up here the shop cleaning equipment these panels have been <laughs> awesome at just making me be able to utilize this space in a much better fashion um, i also have a pretty bad addiction to star bond in case you haven't been able to tell there. I've got this little tiny baby 10 inch when drill press and uh, it's honestly been all I've ever needed. Yeah, there's, there's been a few occasions where I, I would benefit from a huge fancy drill press, but for now it works. I also like hoarding hardware. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just cheap, but 
Uh, I find that I'll usually end up reusing it if the, the screws and everything are still in good condition. This is from when I just revamped my planter cart, so got to go through that later. Is it worth my time? Probably not, but whatever. And as far as I'm concerned, every good wood shop needs a refrigerator. This is actually from my old cubicle days, but normally this is full of body armor. Um, one of those a day, I, I find, helps keep the doctor away. So then in these drawers is where I keep most of my bits and, you know, driver accessories. And this is where I keep most of my corded and cordless tools. I mean, I'd love to have them all on a wall, proudly displayed, but I just don't have the wall space for it. So, and down in this last drawer, oh yeah, that's, that's fun to open. Um, really packed. Got some moving blankets for, you know, whenever I'm transporting the bigger items. And then just random pipe um, left over from when I used to dabble in industrial furniture. Now, this chair, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, not just something that helps to take a load off the old back. It's also a tool. I'll tell you what, routing certain things that are like, you know, low or whatever, it's just so much easier to do when you're sitting in a chair. So, especially when it's on wheels. Up here is just kind of a hot mess, but um, you know, I have some hardware, mainly rags and just kind of administrative stuff, notepads and everything. Then my clamp wall, uh, mainly consisting of Bora clamps. Um, I know everyone has their, their clamp preference. I was partnered with Bora for a while and I really enjoyed working with them and they had awesome customer service and their clamps have never let me down. So got a couple of their different centipedes over here and then my Shop Max drum sander. It's just a baby drum sander. If I could give advice to any beginning woodworker, it would be if you know this is a passion and that you plan on doing it at least as like a relatively frequent hobby, um, buy the biggest, best of whatever that tool is the first time around instead of, you know, getting a smaller version and then upgrading, then upgrading, then upgrading. Because uh, that's what I've done with a lot of things. And I really wish I would have bought a larger drum sander at first but I was being kind of cheap at the time, and I was also worried that I just wouldn't have the space in my shop. And as it turns out, I would have been able to at least get the, the size larger. But all things considered, it's been a good drum sander. The main thing is the smaller width belt you have, the harder it is to keep it on track. So I do battle with that occasionally, but you know, I guess that's not too big of a deal. And I'm basically a pack rat when it comes to storage. If there's a little cubby hole anywhere, I will find a way to turn it into storage. And that's what I did here. Um, this box isn't even attached to the frame at all. I just built a box inside of the frame and able to store. I actually don't have anywhere near as much in here as I used to. I just moved everything over to my workbench. But, I mean, it can still fit quite a bit in there. Um, it's better than not having anything down there. So, And so next to the drum sander is where I keep my sheet goods cart. My ceilings are just under eight feet in some spots, so I can't really store sheet goods vertically like I would you know, prefer to do. So most of the time when I know I have a ton of sheet goods to offload, I'll make sure that I have my measurements beforehand. And I'll back my truck right up to the garage, slide them out of the bed of my truck onto my table saw and assembly table, break them down, usually just in half with my track saw and stash them right here. And then there's my Laguna 1412 bandsaw. Um, it's just one with the 1.75 horsepower motor, but that's been everything I need to resaw through crazy stuff like EPEG. So um, the 13 inch resaw capacity is huge. I definitely used that a few times and yeah, I, I love that bandsaw. So this is my awesome shop sign that my buddy Dusko at DP Woodworks made on his fancy laser robot thing. I don't know. I was just like, hey dude, can you make me a big shop sign with my weird logo on it? And he was just like, yeah, of course. So that's how that happened. So I actually just downsized this planter cart because it was about twice as wide. And I was thinking to myself, there's no way I want to move that, especially trying to like get it up into a moving truck. But I also like the ability to have somewhere to put everything that I'm planning. So I just made these fancy wings just kind of cannibalized it and you know use the existing top yeah that top shows you almost how wide it was before so um, really easy to move around of course it is on casters too and then I just kind of stash a lot of random you know off cuts like am I ever going to use this probably not 
but who knows, maybe I'll, you know, make a big cutting board out of them one day. And then just little pieces that I can, you know, turn into something small. Same thing over here, just, just more random off cuts. Like, come on, dude, stop hoarding wood. I just can't help it. So here's my main dust collection, the Harbor Freight 2 horsepower. Um, obviously it's a strong motor, but man, is it awkward to mount on the wall. Like it just, everything's in the wrong spot. That's the best solution I came up with. Um, and then I upgraded to the Grizzly one micron filter a while back. And yeah, just thinking about how long I went with only that five micron bag on there is kind of scary. So, but hey, at least I did it now. Added the Growler two stage cyclone system. And not to get all into dust collection because there's a, a ton of videos out there on that. But the big thing is, is that I did notice a you know slight reduction in uh, CFM and you know pull when I added that. But it's definitely been worth it to me. And of course, my piping system isn't the best, but you know, kind of making it work for what I have. So this is essentially my milling area, and uh, I have this long hose that connects to my table saw. And of course, I'm losing a ton of suction by doing that. But the motor itself obviously isn't going to be powerful enough to you know run a pipe across the ceiling with very few 90s and very little hose and all the science that goes in dust collection. Um, so making it work given the space and all in all it does a really good job. So whenever I need to mill up I can still leave my hose attached to my table saw and I got a couple of different hoses. I know it looks like a hot mess but you know it works for me. Something else that I did do which you can't really see back here is I added four outlets and then I also added four outlets on the other side of my shop and each of those have dedicated 20 or 30 amp breakers, I don't remember, but basically it was well worth the money because before that, you know, typical garage, I only had like two outlets um, and I was always flipping breakers anytime I use my planer or my table saw. So haven't had that issue at all. It was money well spent. Speaking of money well spent, that duct was not there when I moved in. I don't have windows in this garage and all of the walls are concrete. So, you know, putting one of those outside units or wall mounted AC units on wasn't really an option for me. And I don't have any windows or a, a separate, you know, garage door aside from the one that goes into my house. So I had an HVAC tech come out here and he ran a eight inch line from my main condenser up into the attic, dropped that in. And then I had a switch right near my main light switch that, uh, turns it on and turns it off basically, it closes the vent. And it has been the best investment that I put in this garage because I don't have to keep my garage door open and you know sweat profusely when I'm out here or worry about nosy, looky-loo neighbors. And it also keeps the noise level down because I don't have to have my garage door open. So, and then if you'll notice, I have um, rolled up plastic on PVC. And what happens there is I drop those down and it becomes a eight by eight spray booth. And then there's also these lights um, they were like 45 bucks for a six pack on Amazon. Uh, they're called Barina. I'll leave a link down in the bio, but they've been amazing. Um, I've had them for years and I haven't had any issues with them. It's just hard to imagine that I used to work in here with only, uh, basically the two, you know, stock lights that come in the house or whatever. It was nowhere near enough light. Probably explains why I have glasses now. My table saw is the Laguna Fusion F2 with the 1.75 horsepower motor and I've had some issues with this table saw but all in all it's been great um, <clears throat> more than enough power to you know slice through whatever I need especially with the right blade on and I've definitely made some modifications to how this is set up um, a lot of these table saws are at like 33 inches and I just don't like having to stare down all the time so I raise it up to meet most of my standard work surface heights which is 37 inches and I did a lot of that with this <laughs> extremely beefy yet agile uh, Bora Mobile base it's the PM I believe it's the 3500 but all of these come down and you know lock and raise it up and then the main reason why I like this base is because of how wide it is and all of the wheels swivel so I mean I can turn this thing on a dime with zero you know zero turning radius so on this Laguna Fusion F2 it is not easy to add a router link that isn't you know basically a standard plate so thankfully my old cobalt desktop router table I was just able to take the legs off and it perfectly fit in there and then I just used the existing track to put a little angle iron bracket in here 
and then the two existing holes I added another track and then this cubby where I have all my little drawers with the hundreds of router bits I've collected over the years I believe this design was inspired by Jackman works um, but this dust trap has been awesome basically I can still use my table saw fence for the, the longer or you know the, the deeper items but then I can also just take the old cobalt router fence which I have on the back of the table saw hook that up to a 2.5 hose and then on the back side I have a four inch port and like barely any dust gets out so it's been great for that and then I added this wall control panel on the side because you know it's just nice to have all of those push sticks and table saw accessories right there to help keep things nice and safe. So this orientation is normally how I have my island set up, but whenever I'm doing a lot of sanding or using the domino, I simply rotate everything over here so I have easier access to all my hoses. And another great thing about this is if I have to make a cut on my table saw, I still have the room to. I'm just obviously not gonna be ripping a four by eight panel like this. Can't forget one of the most obvious parts of my shop and that's my uh, lumber storage racks from Bora. I've got uh, two of these six tier ones on the outsides and then I have a four tier one right up here and it is insane how much wood I can stash up here. It's obviously nowhere near as full as it used to be I've been kind of downsizing and trying to use everything up since I'm moving, but I mean this walnut beam right here alone uh, before I cut it in half was easily over 100 pounds. I had a couple of my own little homemade shop versions at first and they were great, but I quickly realized it's hard to beat you know, how much space you can get out of these racks when they're just made by a company. Um, so unless you're like a welder or something and my skills with that are pretty limited. All right, so before I get to the whole closing comments thing, I just wanted to say that before I made the transition into the, you know, the scary, bold new world of trying to be a full-time woodworker and, and leaving my secure, you know, full benefits and nice salary job, I told myself that there's plenty of people out there who are probably way more successful than I'll ever be with far less capabilities in their shop than I had at that time, you know, about three or three or so years ago. Um, so, you know, it's, it's easier for people to be like, oh, well, I, I can't do that because I don't have those tools. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, this was nothing when I started. I had barely anything and, you know, worked my way up to, to getting all of these fancy tools. And I mean, my shop isn't even that decked out compared to some of the ones out there. Um, so what I'm really trying to say is don't let tools or anything like that limit what you're doing. You know, do I need a domino? No, I don't. Does it make things easier? Of course it does. Um, did I pay, you know, basically a kidney on the black market for it? Yes, I did, but it was worth it uh, to me. So, but before that, there was other ways that I was doing things and I was still making awesome furniture. It might have just taken me a little bit longer. That's all. So whatever your situation is now or whatever situation, you know, you're trying to get into as far as your wood shop and woodworking goes, I wish you the absolute best and I hope you picked up a thing or two from this tour and it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer them however I can. Until then, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe, and hopefully one of my next videos is of me in a much larger shop in the middle of the woods. Take it easy.